Our first example for angular momentum is as follows. We have two disks rotating in the same direction. We're going to make them rotate counterclockwise looking at them. Are pushed together so we have a collision. We're asked to find the final angular speed of the combination when they're stuck together. So in a linear story this would be two masses moving in the same direction and they stick together and we're asked to find the final com combined speed. In this case, we're doing rotation. So we're given the following information for both disks. The first disk is 2 kilograms with a radius of 0.2 meters. Its initial angular speed is 50 radians per second. And again, we're going to have it rotate counterclockwise. Disk 2 has a mass of 4 kilograms, a radius of 0.1 meters, and its initial angular speed is 200 radians per second in the same direction. So if we draw a picture, it would look something like this. We have a collision that's occurring. We're asked to find the final speed after the collision, so we know this is going to be a momentum problem. The first thing we'll need to do is calculate the moments of inertia for both disks. And if we look at our chart for a solid cylinder rotating through its center, and in this case it's horizontal, the moment of inertia is 1 half mr squared. We have the same picture, but our cylinder is vertical. So let's calculate the first one. It's going to be 1 half. Mass of 1 is 2 kilograms. Radius of number 1 is 0.2. Don't forget to square that. And that will give you 0 0.04 kilograms meter squared. So that's an indication of how difficult this is to rotate. For the second moment of inertia, 1 half, its mass is 4 kilograms so twice as massive, but it has less radius. So when we calculate its moment of inertia, we see that this one is going to be easier to rotate. It has a smaller moment of inertia, and that's due to the fact that it has a smaller radius, so more of the mass is concentrated near the center. Since there's no outside unbalanced forces acting on this, no torque, um, our closed system of two masses at the beginning is still our closed system of two masses at the end. We know that our momentum is conserved, and in this case, angular momentum, just like our previous collisions. So at the beginning, we have two things with angular momentum. Um, we have mass 1 that's rotating in omega 1, and mass 2 rotating in omega 2, and at the end, they're stuck together, rotating at some final angular speed, omega prime. Divide both sides by I1 plus I2, and you'll have the equation omega prime is the angular momentum of the first plus the angular momentum of the second divided through by the total um, moments of inertia. So if we put in these values, I1 was 0 0.04. Its initial angular speed was 50. I2, 0 0.02. Its initial angular speed was 200, and then we're going to divide through by the total moments of inertia, and that gives us 0 0.06. If you put all of those values into your calculator, you'll end up with a value of 100 radians per second. Now, this seems to make sense that our final speed is going to be somewhere between the two, so the slower one is going to speed up the faster one is going to slow down, and they'll be moving together at 100 radians per second. Now there's an added question here. Um, how would this change if they were initially rotating in opposite directions? So in that case, let's make the second one go in the opposite direction, so going clockwise instead of counterclockwise, and don't forget that that would indicate a change in sign. So one of these would have positive rotation, the other one would have negative rotation, and then we would need to see which one wins out, which one has a stronger moment um, or angular momentum. And if the clockwise is stronger than the counterclockwise, then we expect that one to win out. So we would need to do a minus in all of our um, equations because um, I2 omega 2 is going in the negative direction, and we would then see what our final angular speed was. So please make sure you're also um, adding and paying attention to the directions of rotation when we're looking at these equations.